from that. But, this they, is well, they, a, they, but, they, but this gets to the second point. Can I just make, one, I make one quick factual point, which is they both said that Bill Clinton should resign from office because of his affair. And both of them, uh, c certainly David Vitter even more recently, but I also think John Edson sponsored amendments, uh, sponsored legis le le legislation so that gay people can't get married. So right, and and again, I mean, and I get that in the context of their once they're in office. But the question is, how did they approach that? And maybe they made those points. And this gets to my second point: is I've always had a problem with any political party espousing morality that they are not ordained to espouse. In other words, I go to my minister, my rabbi, my imam uh, to have my faith lifted, to have that moral code instilled. Uh, I do not go to my politician for that. And so when you get on that horse and you want to ride that horse very much like we saw our good buddy Mr. Colbert do last night trying to load his gun, you spill stuff everywhere. And it always comes back to bite you right on the butt uh, in a way that you have to stand in front of that camera and look the people in the eye and go, well, I told you to do one thing while I was doing something else. And that is not a position you want to be in. Well, did so when Republicans talk strategy, though, does that come up? I mean, I, nobody no. believes me when I it doesn't. No. I mean, like no. Chris, Christopher Lee. Christopher Lee sends out a shirtless picture of himself on the internet on Gawker. I honest, nobody believes this is true, but it's you can check with my staff. The notes are there from our news meeting. We would not have put that on the air. It would not have been newsworthy, in my estimation, had he not resigned. His resignation made it newsworthy because he took an act that affected the United States House. But other than that, I find, think it would have been private. Re Republicans can't see that they're buying themselves a little insurance by laying off about other people's marriages? Well, you know, I, I agree. With, I, I just think it's a place you don't need to be as a political institution uh, to, d to delve into those types of uh, issues. Uh, and when they do come out, I think you do have to be respectful and handle them in a very interesting way, but uh, a very important way. But the interesting thing for me uh, about the Representative Lee was how the leadership in this instance actually got him to resign before the, the people largely knew what it was he was resigning over. Uh, and so that was an instance where, uh, you know, Speaker Boehner was very proactive. And I think it's, it's, it speaks to him and how he looks at these things. Uh, and, and again, you go back, you look at Nancy Pelosi uh, coming in saying that she's going to clean up this Republican cesspool. All the while, Mr. Weiner was engaging in this kind of behavior, sometimes in this congressional office. That That's the type of hypocrisy in politics uh, when we get on that slide slippery slope but wait, hold on, hold on. Nancy Pelosi, when she found, But when Nancy Pelosi found out about this, she's demanding that there be an ethics investigation. That's um, now. Yes. I'm talking yeah. about then, and this is the point. But you this don't is when know, she, as soon as she found you, out about it, she called for the I know, investigation. I'm, what I, agree with that. I, I, I get that. Totally. I get that. But what I'm talking about when, when Pelosi ran, uh, when the Democrats ran to take control uh, two years, three years, four years ago, they ran on this issue. You know, we're going to clean up the cesspool, uh, you know, these, these uh, flagrant uh, violations of ethics rules within the House. All the while, members uh, within their own party were engaged in that activity, and that's why you need to be very careful in how you go to the public to approach these issues, See, because think, they do come back to bite. I think people screwing up is inevitable in life and in politics, maybe more inevitable in politics, because people get into politics who think very highly of themselves often, and that often yep. goes along with bad behavior. So I think, I think that's going to happen. I think the ethical issue is how you handle it when it Arises, and right. that's why the Reince Priebus thing actually makes my eyes cross. For him to say, John Ensign, who knows, David Vitter, who cares, but Anthony Weiner, he's got to go. I feel like that is almost an unpardonable humiliation for <laughs> somebody in the position that well, but he's see, in. But, but the thing is, the other side of this coin, too, uh, Rachel, is the fact that he's the, po the party chairman. So he's got to, he's got, not going to throw his guys under the bus. That's the politics of it. Just as the Democrats did didn't want to throw the Louisiana uh, congressman with $90,000 in the, in the freezer under the bus. They wanted to promote him. Uh, so, you know, the, the fact of the matter is the political institutions, when one of their own gets in, the, gets in that crosshairs, does tend to try to protect them and others in some manner. I think to your broader point with respect to both Democrats and Republicans, enough is enough. When you screw it up like this, you've got to be prepared to pay the piper in a big way. And with respect to Representative Weiner coming on your show, looking you in the eye and lying directly to you and ostensibly the American people, that is an unpardonable sin as an elected official. Well, if it's unpardonable, 
I am going to start wearing this as a mask every day until we start enforcing that as a pardonable sin on both sides of the aisle. But I'm not, I'm not, I'm not exonerating Vitter or anyone else on that. But on you didn't give point. back. You you took money from his pack and didn't give it back after this all came out and everything in 2006 when you were running for Senate. I mean, the, the, nobody's been calling for him to resign. You never called for him to resign when you were party chairman. No, I didn't. And again, it goes to that point about the, the you know, you're going to put the political part of this, the politics of it is that you do, you know, you take do, care of your own as best uh, as best you can. You do I mean, unprincipled I, things because you're running the party and you're not modeling no, good no, behavior. No, 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 it's not, but it's not, it's not, but wait a minute, no, 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 don't, I'm not taking it that way. What I'm just saying is that there, there are two, there are two competing interests in this, in this dynamic. And you saw it played out this week. Uh, and you, you still, you don't have the cavalcade of, of Democrats rushing uh, to get uh, Wiener out of out of the house. You have those who stood with him, and you can't tell me they didn't have some inkling if they were that close to him of what some of his behavior was. Nobody is supporting him. Nobody's taking his back. Everybody's saying that they ought to investigate him. I, well, no, I, I realize that it's... They're not saying that no one's supporting him publicly. But that, but, right. but that silence, but that silence, that lack of a call uh, for his resignation, that lack of a call for action beyond They're the calling speaker. They're an investigation into him. I mean, this beyond the speaker is. And the is, chair of the House Democrats campaign committee and, and, and Harry Reid today saying, if he called me for advice, I'd tell him to call somebody else. No, but I, I understand that it's a sort of pox on both their houses is the popular thing to do here. But the Republicans have such a bigger problem on this name, David Vitter, than the Democrats do. On Michael Weiner. Uh, well, I, I, I just uh, just <laughs> just on that final point, I, I think the one thing that Cantor and others have said is true. At the end of the day, and this will be the case for Congressman Weiner. It will be the people of his district who will ultimately decide his political fate. If he decides to uh, stay in the the office and run for re-election, they will have the chance to to cast their opinion, their vote, one way or the other, on his behavior and his actions. The same was true with Vitter. The same was been true for others. In the case of Ensign, it was very clear that was beyond anything the voters were going to do. He had he had legal and ethical uh, committee issues that were about to come pouncing on his head. So but he to took took that way up. But I'm just saying, ultimately, it all comes home to roost for these guys, either at the ballot box or in, in their caucus in some way. And to have Reince Priebus saying that Anthony Weiner's the guy who has to quit, but, Michael, but John Ensign, oh well. He went on his own terms. Man, this Lame is a answer. Republican part. part. This no, is a Republican understand. problem right now. Michael Steele, MSNBC political analyst, former RNC chairman. I enjoy talking to you very much when we agree and when we disagree, sir. Thank Absolutely, you. Absolutely, Rachel. All right, we'll be right back.